live with you and be awful, awful hurt if I ask you to save your money from golf and uh, pro to get some of your school stuff. And I said, no, it would, it would be fine with me because she'd do anything for me. Yeah. And so... Okay, tell me your golf story again. I missed it. Tell me, who did you go golfing with? Who did you caddy for? I golfed at, uh, it, was, it wasn't the Elks, and it was just the Lafayette Country Club, I think. Or Lafayette, just a, a golf course. Yeah. And uh, the people I golfed for, or caddied for, uh, was uh, Dick Taylor. He run the, the, you might say, the petroleum industry around Lafayette, uh, okay. uh, filling stations and all that. Yeah. And Don Brand, he was, he uh, was more or less a, a had the control of uh, the coal industry. Yeah, it okay. was there on uh, 9th Street. And, uh, uh, oh, I, I don't know, is this, uh... So they paid you five bucks every time you golf because you carry both... Every time I, well, I carry two bags. Yeah. One on each shoulder. Uh, they call me Goliath. And they want the red-headed Goliath. And, uh, I could spot them damn balls where other guys couldn't. I, I... I could pretty well take them where it needed to go. All right. And uh, so. Uh, well, that was good. But, uh, and I'd ride down there from Mount Morency on a bicycle. And now, if they had to do that today, they'd die. <laughs> but uh, I did. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, no. Horniger was the caddy master. Uh, he run the shack, mm -hmm. and uh, he's the one that uh, would uh, 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 let you go out or send you out or whatever. Yeah. And uh, he always wore, rode a, a white uh, Motorcycle. Wally Davidson motorcycle. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was in this of that. Bruce, it's a lie. <laughs> and, uh, and you played on Home Hospital Golf League then, huh? Uh, yeah, when I got to the Home Hospital, they had a, uh, a golf... Uh, well, they had a couple of clubs. Yeah. And uh, yeah. different divisions. And yeah. Stop it. I played with the, uh, the division. Give me love to leave it. Uh, I can go take the stuff down there. No, maybe later. With, with, with maintenance and stuff like that. Love you. You're good. Uh, Don't be I forget the name of the track. Okay, it's still me. there. Uh, I love you. Uh, by, I love you. At Rossville. Uh, and my name is, uh, and then after we, <laughs> after we have our meet, we go to Teresa's. Of course, Teresa's wasn't like it is today. Yeah. It was just a beer joint. And we go there <laughs> and um, have our beer, you know. <laughs> Uh, we had an awful lot of fun that way. Um, so, but when they, when they went out, well, we'd use a hospital van to go out, and we'd have a designated driver. And, uh, and then we'd bring us back to the hospital, so we'd get our car, and of course, then we were on our own. <laughs> Better not go home polluted either. Yeah. <laughs> that wouldn't be good. Yeah, and so we just, uh, uh, that was the end of my golfing. Uh, that I, oh, I've, uh, I've been someplace maybe on vacation and they'd have a golf range there and I'd go rent some clubs and then hit a few balls just to 
just more or less mess around that way. And, uh, but, uh, no, I kind of miss it. I, I, I envy these guys. I see them going out there. Oh, uh, you know, they got the old money and everything. And, they, uh, and they, but, um, I, that's about the end of my golfing. I haven't yeah. golfed for years. Yeah. I used to, I used to kind of enjoy it. I did. Well, you were good at it. You used to be a pretty good, bunch of, pretty much a par golf course right there. Yeah. Yeah. That was par view. You said you usually be, usually hit par usually, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I used to like that in par three. Yeah. That was at the end, on, it was on 26. Now, if you went to Klondike School and then go straight... I'm going to get so, my grandpa so I can get going, okay? Grandpa wants to go. Went straight south till you hit 26. That's as far south as you can go. Uh -huh. Then just to the right a little bit uh -huh. would be by par three. Oh, okay. And Dean Hart owned that. Okay. And it was a three-hole outfit. Okay. But Lots it was popular as the Dickens. Huh. A lot of people. A lot of people like that, huh? Yeah. And it was a nice little course. <laughs> I got him and brought him all. Huh. Um, and he found a job of some kind, I don't know. And, uh, <clears throat> so how did Pat and Dick meet? How did they what? How did Pat and Dick get together? How did Pat well, and Dick, uh, Dick uh, was in high school and graduated, uh, or getting ready to graduate. Pat was about, uh, well, I don't know, uh, probably a sophomore. Yeah. Uh, they got to going together, and then the, uh, uh, they ran off to get married. Did they go to the same high school? Huh? Did they go to the same high school? Klondike. Oh, they won't, okay, they won't go to Klondike, okay. And uh, so they left uh, me a note in my cigarette, empty cigarette. Well, I don't say it's empty. It was, a, I bought the cigarettes by the carton. Yeah. And I did a pack out, and uh, there was a note in there, and uh, they had eloped. Ah. And so we told, uh, I told Nita, she said, that doesn't surprise me at all. And uh, George and Ann, that's Dick's mom and dad. They took it just like anybody else would. And we all decided that since they were going together, and think we'd just take them and get them married. Mm -hmm. We couldn't get them married around Indiana or wherever it is. But somewhere... Was that because Pat was too young? Uh, along the Mississippi. Uh, and I can't think of the name of the town, uh, but all four of us, we uh, went and found out where the kids was at or they knew, and we did. They had a wedding ceremony and a dinner and stuff like that. And, um, yeah. well, that, was, that was it. They were married. They could get married in that state. Yeah. Like Iowa or whatever. Probably Mississippi. And so that's why we went where we did. Yeah, okay. Uh, 
and they were married. So then when they came home, why, Dick was in Purdue, that was it, and uh, he stayed in Purdue. God's blessing he did, I think. Yeah. And uh, I don't know whether Pat finished school or not. I just kind of doubt it. And uh, that's when they had Nan. Oh, okay. She was as cute as anything you ever laid your eyes on. And today, you wouldn't believe it. I think she must weigh 300 pounds and ugly as a mud fence. <laughs> you just wouldn't believe it. Yeah, I don't know what happened to her. That's sad. Yeah, it is sad. Sad to weigh that much at yeah. her age. I mean, I mean, she's not young, but she's not that old. Yeah. So Jan met Sandy in the Air Force, is that how Jan and Sandy met? Well, uh, Jan uh, was uh, in Purdue, I think, yeah. Oh. But they needed a job for the summer, and uh, I got him a job as a timekeeper in the tube mill. Uh, and. Uh, He got sick and tired of that, and uh, he joined the Air Force. And boy, that broke us up. We thought he'd go ahead and do Purdue and do whatever. Instead of that, he joined the Air Force. And I mean, how, how did it break you up? Just was unhappy about it? Yeah. He wanted to be a pilot, huh. and his eyes Wouldn't let him. failed him. No. That's too bad. So then they made him an electrician, and uh, he uh, was stationed right over there, ran to him, right uh, not very far from where. Uh, University of uh, Illinois. And, uh, every weekend we'd go over and get him. Wanted to have big old pot roast or chicken stuff, or he'd have a big fine dinner for him. He'd always bring a buddy. And, uh, they'd, drive, they'd drive a car home. From ran to her and they brought on a date and then they'd get back in time to check in. Like in you know, they made good several times. And uh, so where did they get married? Anyway, we were all at the couple them, Lois and Joe and myself. Now, uh, then they came home, and the car going back went kaput. And they didn't have any way of getting back to so Joe, you have to give him credit, knew a friend, landed a plane right there where they were almost, picked him up, and set him down where they were supposed to be, checked in. Oh, wow. They left, left that car to get it fixed, whatever it was. Well, that meant somebody had to pick the car up. And uh, some friend of that guy that had the bed car, he took him over to the 
put get the, get the car pay for it or whatever. But you know, I didn't know it could be done. I wouldn't know today if it could be done. But there were three people talking on that phone. Three of us. They were talking. Down to Cumberland and the kids for the bum car and myself here and uh, to Cumberland. Ah. Uh, so where did Jan and Sandy get married? Uh, where did Jan and Sandy get married? When did they get married? Where? Where? Jan and Sandy got married. Got married in a dump in South Dakota. Where he was stationed at uh, Air Force Base there. And he met her to have dances around. And they met her one of them dances. And of course, he hadn't had any dates or anything. And he fell in love with that. And Oh boy, so they're going back and forth, back and forth, pretty soon to stuff to married. Um, Juanita and I went over, they lived in a dump. We helped all we could to get it straightened out, so Juanita did. I mean, like the little curtains of the rain and then the and he in the meantime to make some extra money he'd take these hides that were frozen or some of them weren't frozen and unload them out of them box cars. Huh. That's what he was making his extra money with. Uh, to me, that, that's, that's pretty hard, hard labor. Shitty labor. Yeah, it is. Um, uh, she worked for her dad. Her dad sold cars. He run a sawmill, and one of them got away from him and got his leg. Oh, wow. So he lost the leg. So then he had to go into making uh, 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 income, and he went to selling cars. And they'd go to auctions, and then he'd drive one, she'd drive one. I drive over and drive back. Oh. So. That's all. So, how'd you meet Juanita? Huh? How did you meet Juanita? Well, I played football for West Side, and she went to Jeff. And we. A half a dozen of us football players went over to Jeff, set up in the balcony of Jeff and watched the gals do their calisthenics and stuff. Well, I've seen Juanita down there. I didn't know her, never seen her before in my life. I said to one of these girls, 
Hey, so I said, uh, boy, I'd like to have a date with that. He said, well, I'll take care of that. By God, he did. I got a date. And oh. from then on, there was <laughs> John Lennon wanted him. We'd, uh, we'd go out to, uh, used to be Smitty's. It's a piece of ground now. Smitty's is gone. Yeah. Uh, used to be Smitty's there. And you could go in there and dance. Uh, you take your, uh, you take your stuff. They didn't seem to realize it, and you'd buy your drinks. I did. You'd buy the stuff, then you'd mix it, and then dance there. Nobody seemed to really get up hot about it. Take your jug and buy your drinks there and pour your stuff in it and dance away. Ah. <laughs> and so her dad was a master mechanic on caterpillars and all that. Worked for Ryan Construction that built roads. He took care of these caterpillars and stuff. Yeah. And they moved from Lafayette to Evansville. Ryan did, and he, of course, he had to go too. About, about a, about a month, and I got a letter and stuff where they lived and so forth. She missed me, I missed her, of course. So, <laughs> Bob Cassidy and I, he lived across the road. He had a Model A, 28, and I had a 30. Uh, okay. Evansville, a 30 uh, Model A convertible. Yellow wheels, black, it looked nice. Uh, he had a 28. <laughs> It wasn't near as sprucey looking, but it was a good one. I told him one day, I said, Bob, let's go down to Evansville. I want to see Juanita. He said, okay. So that's what we're done. We loaded her up with gas, and away we went. And ended up, everything. knocked on the door, and there she was. We got in the car and we rode around and rode around. And 